what he said, all of that is discounted in advance. Let me give you an example. They accept the story of the persistent widow in Luke chapter 18. You remember where she came and she was so persistent that eventually she got her wish. But in verse 18, when it says, Jesus says, I tell you that he will see that they get justice quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? They say to themselves, Jesus couldn't have said that. Now notice how arbitrary they are. They say, yeah, the story could have happened, but Jesus could not have said this. Why? Because remember, in their mind, Jesus is a mere man. And no man has a right to say these words. Therefore, Jesus didn't say it. Do you see, Dave, how uh, they are absolutely determined that Jesus is not allowed to tell his own story? Well, I assume then that what's happened is that they believe people took the original story and kind of embellished it over time. Oh, yeah, they would say, like others, that uh, the original apostles, there's a kernel of truth with regard to Jesus, but they wanted to make Jesus into a Messiah. And so they added the miracles and they put all of these words into his mouth. Yeah, that's exactly what they would want to say. So they think they're doing the world a favor by stripping off all these unwanted embellishments, getting back to the real deal. Not only are they doing the world a favor, they believe, but remember their intention is to get a lot of press. They said that for too long, these kinds of studies were done by scholars in uh, closed rooms. It's time to get it out there. That's why every Easter, I notice here in the Chicago newspapers, oftentimes you will find an article about the Jesus Seminar and their conclusions. That's why what we're talking about today is not simply an academic exercise. This is vitally important. And if I need to say it, that the reason I wrote this book is to help people to understand what is going on and to be able to give to our high school students and college students resources that will help them answer these objections to Christianity. When you approach the New Testament with the whole idea that the miracles couldn't have happened or Jesus couldn't have said certain things that would prove his divinity, when you approach the Bible that way, the end result is certain. You're going to come up with a purely human Jesus, the Jesus that you had in mind at the beginning of your study. So I don't know exactly how to communicate all this to children, but I do think that we need to teach our children to think critically, especially when they get to high school and college, and to be able to always uncover how our presuppositions end up determining what we believe and what we accept and what we don't accept. The other thing that we need to do, even in our Sunday schools, I'm convinced, and I became convinced of this because of the Da Vinci Code, what we need to do is to begin to teach our children about history, the history of the Bible, how the Bible came together. And I think that that can be taught even at an elementary level and to help people to see how the books were collected and, uh, and why we reject such things as the Gnostic Gospels. This, of course, should become part of the church curriculum, and we need to be able to help our parents uh, minister to children, help children, help meet the objections that they have to Christianity. And again, that's why so many good resources are available to do that. And one such resource that should be in every parent's arsenal, of course, is this book, Slandering Jesus. Pastor Lutzer, when I read this book, I came across a line I had to read twice. Help me with this. Not all people are made better when they encounter Jesus. He leaves some people worse than he finds them. Now, what did you mean by that? Well, you know, Jesus made that statement, For judgment I came into the world, so that the blind will see, and those who see will become blind. And how that sounds very strange, but what Jesus is saying is this, that if you think you see, and you don't think that you need the light that Jesus brings... You actually are made blind in his presence. But for those who know that they need light and who are seeking for the light, when you come to Jesus, you are made better. I guess the bottom line there, Dave, is that there are some people who are indeed worse off because Jesus came to this earth. Because he said, if I had not been here, you wouldn't be guilty of certain sins. But because I've spoken to you, your judgment is greater. So in the presence of Jesus, we need to make up our minds. Either we need to seek him as the light and as the Savior, if we turn away from him 
and uh, we don't accept him, our hearts become harder. And yes, I stand by that statement. We actually are worse off. Wow, some somber words taken from Pastor Lutzer's book, Slandering Jesus. These days, conspiracies are all the rage. Just check the blogs on the Internet. One conspiracy that has surfaced is that Jesus has a dark secret. That's lie number five in Dr. Lutzer's book. Tomorrow on Running to Win, we'll find out what that secret is all about. Thank you, Dr. Lutzer. Thanks, Dave. The lies being told about Jesus need to be answered, and they have been, in Dr. Lutzer's book, Slandering Jesus. This Tyndale House book is must-reading for Christians who want to be able to give answers to those whose opinion of Jesus is being formed from the lies told in our culture. There's a copy of Slandering Jesus waiting for you. For your gift of any amount to Running to Win, you'll receive your personal copy of this crucial case for the real Jesus. Simply call us at 1-800-215-5001. That's 1-800-215-5001. Or you can write to Running to Win, 1609 North LaSalle Boulevard, Chicago, Illinois, 60614. And close a gift of any amount and tell us you'd like to receive Slandering Jesus. Online, go to runningtowin.org for full information on this book offer and on the many ministries of Moody Church. Don't forget, Running to Win is supported by listeners like you. This is Dave McAllister. Did Jesus have a dark secret? A skeleton in his closet? To find out, don't miss the Thursday edition of Running to Win.